Welcome to part two of edition 60 of the Global Weather and Climate Report. As discussed uh, and where we left off from the previous part one of the Global Weather Report, we were looking at the Arctic sea ice extent still dropping despite being the 19th of September. Currently, the sea ice extent is six, sixth lowest on record behind 2012, 2020, 2007, 2016, and 2019 and this was of course a tweet by our friend maximiliano herrera extreme temperatures around the world ecuador which is exceptionally close to the el nino region of course temperatures in august under the influence of coastal el nino was abnormally hot temperature normally was close to three celsius above the 1991 to 2020 uh, average and a whopping 1.4 celsius higher than the previous august record for temperature of course so ecuador of course direct uh, response to the el nino of course um, again uh, record warm nighttime temperatures in europe 22 to 24 celsius in slovenia croatia and bosnia in hungary some stations remained above 23 celsius for the whole night before dropping uh, um you know at 7 a.m so remarkable warmth across parts of southern europe uh for the time of the year of course cuba which has seen drought conditions and abnormally warm temperatures uh, of course the hurricanes have uh, and typically do tend to avoid the caribbean with increased shear when you've got the presence of el nino in the east pacific but uh, it looks as if they have just recorded uh, the hottest month uh, on record, surpassing July 2023 uh, during August of 2023 here. So remarkable warmth across uh, the Caribbean region here. Temperatures close to 40 Celsius in Sardinia in recent days also. Uh, our friend uh, Gavin Partridge, by the way, of Gav's Weather Vids, just released is uh, 2023-24 winter update this is the fourth and uh, be sure to watch his latest update uh, i do have a link in the description below to gavin's channel but hours of hard work uh, put into these winter updates so be sure to watch the fourth edition just being released on his channel uh, today so check that out here so um uh, very, very interesting stuff. Let me just have a quick look to see what else we've got going at the moment. Hokkaido in northern, far northern Japan. We now have seen the first snowfall, believe it or not. Even the fact, despite the fact that Japan is seeing day after day of record warm temperatures, both by night and by day, this is the first snowfalls arriving here in far northern portions of Japan, um, a tweet retweet by Robert Spetta. Uh, I believe he's based now in uh, in Florida and Jacksonville, but he did live many years in Japan. And this is, of course, the record breaking warm temperatures. What a remarkable summer Tokyo has had! Eighty eight days above thirty Celsius, the previous record being seventy one days back in twenty ten. Uh, record breaking 64 consecutive days imagine that you think uh, september was bad uh, back in the early portion of september with the eight days in a row above 30 celsius imagine having 64 consecutive days above 30 celsius in the world's biggest city of course the previous record was blown away 40 days back in 2004 record breaking 22 days above 35 celsius and record breaking 57 nights of temperatures no lower than 25 celsius that is a remarkable heat wave summer uh, in japan and i will be fortunate enough uh, if health permits uh, i shall be going with my wife lindsay to tokyo in november so i'm very very much looking forward to that and interesting um, new article released by Severe Weather Europe uh, talking about the influence of El Nino uh, along with the, the polar vortex and negative wind anomaly in the stratosphere. Of course, that is the negative QBO. Uh, you know, folks, even with the amount of warmth that we have stacked up 
uh, around the world at the moment here. Do not think for a second that we have got no winter coming here in you know both the Northern Hemisphere and indeed Western Europe. Uh, with a negative QBO, El Nino depends exactly where the warm water sets up uh, during the winter season. Of course, the, the, the Indian Ocean Dipole. Uh, so many factors to consider and often discussed here on the channel. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're not going to get a winter this year. So be sure to keep that in mind. Uh, tweet here by myself earlier on saying, let's celebrate the GFS is hinting at Scotland's first high elevation snow towards the end of the run here so this is a midnight monday the 9th of october you would expect to see that of course by the time we reach this time frame each year uh, probably a little bit late compared to average actually uh, from previous times here interesting tweet here by met ryan and i'll probably close at this for later october still keeping an eye on the strong mjo activity uh, you know, possible increase in activity within the Manjulian oscillation here. Uh, phase 8, for example, can bring mo uh, some more settled weather conditions. Worth saying that 8, uh, 1 and 2 through November heavily favours unsettled with high pressure away to our northeast over Scandinavia. The Urals, good for polar vortex pressure down the line uh, from a wintry weather perspective. Uh, down the line, we want to see the MGO as strong as possible through phases six, seven, eight, and one, as this supports northern blocking. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. By the way, the the northern blocking situation as we go forward. Now we've had a very very uh, negative NEO summer. We've got a pretty strong negative NEO uh, for the second half of September. Uh, of course, the the you know the tropical activity that we've got going at the moment in the in the in the Atlantic. We'll need to keep an eye on that. Uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, what takes place later down the road here with regards to rainfall later in the month of uh, you know, October, particularly November. You get a very, very wet November. Sometimes that can correlate to a cold December uh, down the road here where the heaviest rainfall uh, falls during the second half of autumn can correlate to where the trough wants to go uh, during the winter season. By the way, this was the scene out of uh, Patong Beach in in Phuket, uh, in Thailand. Here, I actually had the 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 joy of visiting this region of the world. Actually, back in July two thousand nineteen, did see some flooding uh, one particular day, but nothing on par with this. But it uh, made me wonder about the you know there was flooding in parts of Java in Indonesia. There was flooding here in Thailand. There is other areas that are seeing a significant rainfall deficit, but it made me think, was there maybe a bit of a, a, an MJO pulse going through this region of the world in recent days? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, this is another interesting tweet here by World Climate Service. From a big perspective, a uh, big picture perspective, uh, the climb in the, the, the Nino region 3.4 has been quite relentless since late last year about 2.5 Celsius of an anomaly warming uh, in the last 10 months, of course. It's a it's a kind of upper end, moderate to strong El Nino that we've got going at the moment, especially in region uh, you know, 1.2, which is up against the South American coast, then region uh, 3, and then 3.4 is kind of the benchmark um, where, where El Nino was essentially measured, which is closer to the central portion of the Pacific, now, there is quite a lot of models indicating that the warmest waters stack up over the Central Pacific, which would be a Madoki-style El Nino once we head into the harder winter season. We'll look at this in a lot more detail in the coming weeks ahead. This is not unusual as a major uh, El Nino emerges. Uh, in 1997, Nino region 3.4 rose by 3 Celsius in 10 months. In 2009, 2.5 Celsius. So, this El Nino appears to be on par with 2009, and let's hope that we have something similar to 2009 coming up because we know what kind of winter followed that, of course. So I think I've kind of covered essentially everything here in the channel. This is a very interesting tweet, by the way, by Tom Berg, showing the uh, tropical uh, cyclone activity over the North Atlantic and the wake, the cold wake that's left behind by these tropical systems. Always fascinating to see this, by the way. 
But it's going to be an interesting week coming up. It looks like we do have the potential for a storm situation. These are predicted winds, by the way, according to the GFS model of 181 kilometers per hour. Now, the core of those winds are actually off the Irish coast and the UK coast, by the way. But we could see uh, wind gusts in excess of 80 miles an hour over parts of uh, of Ireland and the UK by the time we reach next week, the middle portion of the week. So as said in the previous video, we will look at this in detail come next week. Uh, sorry, come Monday, not next week, come Monday. Look at that there, 968 millibar low on the uh, Donegal coast by the time we reach 1500 hours on Wednesday this upcoming week. So a very interesting week of weather to come. If you haven't already done so, be sure to subscribe to marfoganweather.com here on YouTube. Lots of content on a daily basis. So stay tuned and I'll see you again tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Bye for now.